Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we once again find ourselves in the court of Judge Middleton as he ends up having to confront and, uh, well, tell a softard exactly how it works because this person, uh, well, shows absolutely no comprehension of the legal system whatsoever and ends up finding herself in contempt of court and sent to jail for a day. But will this uh, day in jail change her mind? Well, wait until the end of the video to see. At any rate, let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The title of the case is People vs. Rosalind Ray Keenan. The allegation is that on or about May 16th in the village of White Pigeon, she did resist and obstruct a police officer and drive with a suspended driver's license. Resisting obstructing is a felony now. It's punishable by up to two years imprisonment. And driving suspended is a traffic matter, punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. It carries two points on your driving record and it requires that your license be suspended. Uh, Someone who is identified as Rosalind Keenan is present. Let me take a guess. She represents the living woman of Rosalind. Uh, the wild guess, right? I'm sure that's how it's going to be. And she wanted to explain more about that. We'll give her a chance to do that. But prosecuting attorney David Marvin is here. And uh, he's representing the state. Uh, so let me ask you again. Are you Rosalind Ray Keenan? I'm here on as a uh, sui juris impropria persona, Rosalind hyphen Ray Colon, family of Keenan, comma, beneficiary. Is this on record? Yes, everything has to be on the record, so it's all being recorded. Okay, I'm here on the special appearance, and I'm a free woman on the land. I'm here under fraud, menace, and duress. I am the private woman, Rosalind hyphen Ray Colon. All right. Keenan, the all capital mentioned name is the only appellation given to me. Anytime I autograph is to be done in, in a certain manner that I have here, or it's forgery. Well, I didn't uh, come out ahead on that guess, but if I would have... Uh, made bets on the other uh, sovereign citizen bingo points, I would have uh, definitely had bingo by this point. Could you give us the judge, please? That's my name. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll accept this. Thank you. All right, so I think we have the right person here. When she signed her bond, she signed it as Rosalind Ray Keenan beneficiary with quick bail bonds. All right, now we've got another issue. This is a felony charge. The first one is. The second one is under the motor vehicle code. And... It requires that we have a preliminary examination, or it requires that you're entitled to a preliminary examination. We had a pre-exam conference last week, and you expressed at that time that you did not wish to have an attorney. Uh, yeah, you may want to rethink that, because that could come back to bite you in the ass. In fact, it's going to bite you in the ass here in the next few minutes when the judge uh, put you in jail for the night, you know, because you wouldn't stop with the sovereign citizen nonsense that's, well, all gobbledygook to begin with. You're here with you this morning without an attorney, and we'll address that in a moment. You've been talking with Mr. Marvin. You have an absolute right to represent yourself. I normally don't recommend it. 
Mr. Marvin will sit down and talk with anybody, whether they're an attorney or whether they're a layperson. So you and he have been meeting to discuss this. Mr. Marvin, is there a plea offer here? There is. Um, and I'll tell you about that. But I wanted to mention that this is, I believe, the third time we've sat down. And uh, so this is dragged out a bit, but only because she's not represented. And um, in these three separate meetings um, and adjournments, the court has uh, allowed those, and I appreciate it. Um, I have spent a lot of time with her and her son, who's here. He's always been here. And they're very honest, and they're good intended. Thank you. Um, and I think that we've come to a resolution that I believe is fair. Uh, I've offered, I'm going to state, state it for the record and only time will tell if she's going to accept it in hopefully two seconds. But what I would do is offer an attempt resisting and obstructing and dismiss count two. And in, I would ask that the court set this for sentencing at a later date and I'd ask for six months. And if by that time there's no other incidents with law enforcement or any other reason to continue, I would dismiss this or at any time before that, if I felt that it was necessary. And again, after um, working with her, I, I don't think this is the kind of thing that should be, um, I would hate to see this upstairs as her first felony. I think that she's uh, interested in a way of life that she's, honestly trying to understand but i think that um partly to assist her um i've kind of hatched this plan and i've offered that i have the feeling she's going to take it today but if not i've got my officer and we're ready for a prelim so uh dropping the uh, felony charge and uh reducing the driving while suspended charge uh to about six months yeah sounds like a good deal to me but uh will she take it uh unfortunately she's just gonna sit here and argue about all this sovereign citizen gobbledygook and well it's not gonna get her anywhere well anywhere today but hey, uh, let's go ahead and have some fun listening to this soft heart anyway. He's offering to reduce the driving suspended charge. And he is offering to dismiss the felony charge and reduce it to a charge called attempted resisting and obstructing a police officer. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. Do you understand that charge? No, I don't understand the nature and the cause of the charge. All right, Mr. Marvin, me. let's just do a prelim. Oh, so you don't understand the nature of the charge. Well, let me break it down for you uh, as far as the what they're offering you here goes. Well, you were caught with while driving under a suspended license, and that's what they're trying to get you for in this particular scenario. And guess what? You have to have a driver's license in the United States to drive on public roadways. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I don't care what you think. It's uh, if you say uh, it's every person's right to travel. Yes, it is. You can travel, but it's the method of travel that counts. You can walk, run, ride a bicycle all you want, but the moment you step behind the wheel of a motor vehicle, you have to have a license, insurance, and registration for that vehicle. I'm not going to tap dance with her. You may be more sympathetic about this flat earth nonsense than I am. Damn! Uh, but if I'm going to have to argue about everything from who she is to what the charge is, it'd be easier to just put on the prelim. From the affidavit of probable cause, her conduct was outrageous with a capital O. And uh, so I'll give you one more opportunity, uh, Ms. Keenan. Uh, Mr. Marvin is agreeing to dismiss the driving suspended charge. The record shows your license is suspended from Indiana and you don't have a valid Michigan license. That's a benefit. It won't affect your driving privileges. Uh, Excuse me? What did you say about the... It's a benefit. No, before that, about the license. 
um, he's dismissing it and it won't affect your driving privileges here or Michigan or Indiana if he dismisses that. Um, so he's offering to dismiss it and that's a benefit. He is offering to reduce the felony charge to a misdemeanor and that's attempted resisting and obstructing a police officer. Um, if you wish to do that, we can pursue it now. If you don't, we can take testimony. The officer's been waiting here for three hours. Um, what would you like to do? Are you asking me to take a plea? I'm asking you if you're willing to accept the prosecutor's plea offer. Well, I don't understand that. Mr. Because Marvin, let's playing, just put I'm on a plea. I'm serious. You are playing games. And first of all, I'm you don't. Trying to advance all to right, what stop. I'm here. You don't interrupt the judge, whether you're a flat earther or not. I'm not flat earther. So. All right. Well, this crazy stuff you're saying, I've got very little patience for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't exactly have too much patience for it either, judge. And I don't have too much respect for either uh, sovereign citizens or or flat earthers maybe one day i'll do some uh flat earth videos on my channel but uh i'm not too great in that field at this very moment uh, i would prefer to relegate that territory to simon dan or uh team skeptic i've seen a lot of his flat earth videos in in the past um you don't have an attorney which concerns me uh, because these charges could result in your incarceration. I will appoint an attorney for you. All you got to do is tell me. Um, but you also have the absolute right to represent yourself. Um, so do you wish to represent yourself or would you like me to get an attorney to assist you with this? It's my right to appear for myself. It and is. I don't think it would be a, a violation of your oath of office. To do what? To um, If you did your duty under the Constitution, because I'm seeking legal intent, not advice. Oh, uh, lady, I think you got that all wrong, because at this point, I seriously think you need some legal advice. And uh, just leave the intent to those who actually know the definition of the word for your sake, please. Well, do you want me to appoint an attorney for you? Would you like to represent yourself? So may I ask what jurisdiction is this civil or criminal? This is a criminal case, which points out the fact that you could use a lawyer if you can't tell the difference between a civil and a criminal case. Well, no shit. Yeah, that much is definitely clear. She definitely needs all the help she can get. Criminal case means you could go to jail, in this case, for up to two years. In a civil case, there's no possibility of jail. It's usually over money damages or other types of non-jail relief, like other types of non-jail relief. So, yes, this is a criminal case. Well... Thank you. So um, you said the record is on. Yes. Could the record of the court show that this is a criminal action? And my next question is, I know that the Constitution grants the court two types of criminal jurisdictions. One is criminal jurisdiction under common law, and the other is criminal jurisdiction under admiralty or military tribunal venue under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Uh, lady, uh, you're going to definitely need a lawyer because, well, uh, you are way off the mark on this one, you dumbass. So please, please, for the love of everything that is constitutional, please go back to the kitty table and let the 
adults handle this while you play with your cards or whatever over there. Of the Constitution, under which of these two jurisdictions is the court intending to try me? This is statutory jurisdiction of the law of the state of Michigan. It's not any of those things, including the wacky admiralty uh, clause people try to invoke. This is criminal jurisdiction uh, authorized by the state legislature uh, here in the state of Michigan. Thank you. Well, please let the record of the court show that the court intends to conduct a criminal action against me under statutory jurisdiction. But that makes me wonder, I have never heard of criminal action under statutory jurisdiction, and there is no such jurisdiction established in the Constitution, and I will be able to proceed if you can show me where I can find the published rules of civil procedures under a statutory jurisdiction and where this nature, cause, and jurisdiction exists, it is crucial that I have the published rules and procedures so that I can conduct a fair defense and fair trial. Otherwise, this needs to be dismissed, and I would like it in writing, please. Uh, thank you. It's not thank civil you. procedure, it's criminal procedure, and the defendant doesn't come up and show, court, tell me why I get to do this. You've been charged under the criminal statutes of the state of Michigan, and I've just advised you of that on the record. I'm just trying to establish at this point whether you want to represent yourself or not. Uh, as I mentioned, the conduct in here and the affidavit or the bond information report is outrageous with a capital O. And you could very well go to jail for a substantial period of time. Mr. Marvin was trying to extend to you an opportunity to avoid that option, uh, but you're wasting all of our time with this stuff that doesn't have any legal merit. I'm offering to give you an attorney who can actually argue any legal merit or advise you or assist you in this regard. But we've had some white pigeon police officers here on overtime for several hours. They're still waiting uh, for you to decide what you wish to do. I haven't even gone over the first. Well, first of all, we had to establish who you were. That took much more time than it deserved. Secondly, I'm trying to determine whether you wish to have an attorney or not. Uh, again, you do have the right to represent yourself. You wish to but you've exhibited to me that you don't understand the law uh, and you're uh, at risk of being incarcerated uh, for this conduct. Um, so to further comment on Mr. Marvin's offer, um, if you pled to the charge of attempted resisting and obstructing a police officer. He offered to defer the sentence for six months, and if there were no further problems, to dismiss it, um, which is very generous based on the police report, bond information that I came with the file. Um, so uh, what would you like to do here today? Do you wish to represent yourself? Thank you. I do. I know I can peer for myself. I'm competent and I am confident. Okay. All right. So the next question is, are please. you willing to accept Mr. Marvin's plea offer to plead to the misdemeanor charge? I wasn't completed with what I wanted to say to you, please. Okay. May I? Thank you. So I wanted to say that I don't believe it's a violation of your oath of office if you did your duty under the Constitution because I'm seeking legal intent. Oh, please don't start this again. Please don't start this again. I mean, lady, you don't need legal intent. You need to learn the word intent first. Uh, what you're seeking now is uh, some legal advice that's not exactly sovereign citizen in nature. So please, for the love of everything constitutional, just do that for us, please.
Okay, so I have the right to peer for myself in order to intelligently defend myself. Intelligently. In care case, that's a laugh. I have to know the jurisdiction this court is operating under because the rules of civil procedure under common law jurisdiction are very different from the rules of civil procedure or right, or military stop. tribunal venue. Stop, stop, stop. We went through this before. I this know, is not civil it's procedure. The Sixth Amendment grants me the right to know the jurisdiction being applied. And I told you what it was. Once again, uh, you really should uh, seek some legal advice because you know what? The Sixth Amendment doesn't say that. Uh, just please, please. No, never mind. It's not. This is not working. Uh, I'm just going to continue to call you a freaking moron from this point on because that's all you are. I mean, who put you up to this? Oh, wait, I know it was your son that put you up to this because you're reading it off a script that he gave you. Which makes this all the more stupid because now you're listening to your son who is a complete moron himself. And it gives you the duty. All right, stop. If you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to find you in contempt and you're going to go to jail. Objection, please. All I right, please. Please. We're going to talk Mayor, about this tomorrow contempt. at 3 o'clock. I find that you're in contempt. You're I going to jail to be right now. Contempt, and we sir. will, well, you have been. I'm simply this matter trying is to adjourned exercise until tomorrow my at Sixth three Amendment o'clock. rights, please. So you can think about and it we can go forward night in jail. With this right now, please. No, you're I, going to jail for 24 hours. Contempt. I know you don't wish to go to jail, but you certainly I have earned it. I will continue with this if you'll please let me finish. We'll talk about it tomorrow at three o'clock, and you will be more respectful to the court. I you can will provide the you citations. You will not interrupt the court. Your citations are meaningless. I'm sorry. I so you can you. go you with the officer. I don't want to argue about it. Take I'm her out of here. Argue. We will address this tomorrow at three o'clock. Stand up and put your hand No. Back. I can't get her, her aspects because they're. They'll get them for you. You can give all the paperwork to him. Thank you. Mr. Marvin, I don't know what you've got tomorrow at 3 o'clock, and I don't know what I have, but we'll take another shot at this tomorrow. Justice takes time. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, and I don't think this was a fair trial. We haven't had a trial yet. And that is another shining example of why you need legal advice, lady, because you just proved without a shadow of a doubt that you have no freaking clue what you are doing because this is not the trial. This is a preliminary hearing in which you are to plead guilty or not guilty based upon, well, certain factors such as the deal that the prosecutor was willing to give you. If you pled not guilty, then it would go on to a trial. If you pled guilty, then they could work something out. But seeing as how that you are a complete incompetent buffoon, you're going to be spending the night in jail. So you know what? Have fun dealing with the other inmates. A fair preliminary. We didn't even get there yet. Yep, absolutely. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. We're going to go over here, Ms. Keeman. Ms. Keeman. Yeah, I'll, I'll get all the property for you. I'll right, go right over here. Here, fill my pockets. Mm -hmm. This is the office. Yep, I, I will get all the property from you, ma'am, and whatever uh, property you want to release to your son. I'll be more than happy to. She's going into uh, custody for contempt. Okay, let's go this way. And then let's watch out for this chair here. I'll there we go. Go ahead and watch your foot. There we go. Uh, that's it. Then it's court over. Yeah, we're done. Can I say something? Yes. Uh, I don't think that she was trying to be in contempt of court. She was trying to exercise a right. And I think it was a misunderstanding of how to, for her to be able to pronounce that. But, uh, well, 
Well, I told her to stop and she didn't stop and she doesn't know what she's doing. She needs a lawyer and she's going to contempt herself into 90 days if she doesn't be careful. So we'll address this tomorrow at three o'clock. And to whatever extent you're advising her on this stuff, you're not doing her any favors. Mr. Marvin gave her the sweetest deal where she could not have a charge on her record. And all she wants to do is argue about admin. She's going to have that record still for that chart, that option still. If I talk to Mr. Marvin. I, yeah, I guess so. Well, you can't represent her as a lawyer. I know. But he could. Yeah, he, Mr. Marvin wants this to be over with. I do too. All right. Thank you. Well, now I do have the video of what happens the next day, so let's go ahead and see if anything about her uh, mood or uh, willingness to uh, proceed with the matter properly has changed. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. Tomorrow. I don't know how I'm gonna go. Good afternoon. Please have a seat. Yeah. We're a little early. It's two fifty-seven. I guess there's no harm in that. Was your son going to come back? Today? Yes, he's coming back. Should we wait till three? Okay. We'll let the clock tick a little bit. I will indicate, well, I'll call the case. This is file 23915FY, People versus Rosalind Ray Keenan. Ms. Keenan is charged with resisting obstructing a police officer, <clears throat> which is a felony punishable by up to two years in imprisonment at a fine of up to $2,000 and with driving suspended. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail <clears throat> and a fine of up to $500. It carries six points, to me, two points <clears throat> on your driving record and it requires that the license be suspended. I apologize, I'm losing my voice at the end of the day here. That sometimes happens. Yeah, I talk too much. Anyway, uh, yesterday we were here for a preliminary examination. We had another case that went first involving a child witness and took quite a bit of time. So we didn't get to this until after three o'clock. Ms. Keenan had previously indicated she did not wish to have an attorney and there was no attorney on her behalf at that time. Prosecutor David Marvin was here yesterday, and there was one or more police officers that were here yesterday prepared to testify. We didn't get very far. We started to go through the particulars, but Mr. Marvin made a plea offer. And I want to repeat that, Ms. Keenan. Um, he offered to dismiss the felony charge of resisting and obstructing. He offered to dismiss the charge of driving suspended, which would not go on your driving record, for a misdemeanor plea to attempting to resist or obstruct a police officer. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. He offered to then defer the sentence for six months. And if there were no other issues or concerns, he would consider dismissing the case. Um, he was not able to be here this afternoon. He stopped in this morning and confirmed to me that his plea offer was still open to dismiss the felony charge and the driving suspended charge for the plea to attempting to resist or obstruct a police officer. Uh, we were talking with Ms. Keenan yesterday. I found that she was in contempt and ordered that she go to jail, and she did, and we're here today. We were trying to establish um, whether she wanted any legal assistance in this matter. So, Ms. Keenan, 
you're the same person that you were yesterday with the same reservations and concerns. Is that correct? Thank you. Um, I have some things on um, my proof that the license shouldn't have been suspended and they did reinstate them in Indiana. All right. Well, he's willing to dismiss that charge. I think that's why, because I showed it to him. All right. Well, maybe so. He said you and he had several discussions. Um, so let's see if we can get to square one here. Do you want an attorney to assist you in this matter? Um, I can appoint one and we can set it for further hearing. I don't want to force one on you, but I do think you could benefit from having counsel. Uh, it was clear you didn't understand the difference between a criminal case and a civil case, and you contempted yourself into a day in jail. I won't be offended if you tell me that you want to have an attorney, in which case I would set this matter for further proceeding out two weeks, um, which would be July 5th. How would you like to proceed, Ms. Keenan? Thank you. So if I choose to get an attorney, I have two weeks, and then nothing else will be brought up today. Correct. Now, you could enter the plea to the misdemeanor offer that Mr. Marvin made today. Um, but I do think you could benefit from having an attorney to assist you with this, okay. in which case um, I would continue it to the 5th of July. That's two weeks from today in the afternoon. Usually it'd be on a Tuesday, but that's a holiday. Um, it would be one o'clock on July 5th. Am I going to be still having to stay at the county jail and wait? Till well, then? let's talk about that. No, you posted a $10,000 cash or surety bond. However, you've not agreed to be fingerprinted. Well, now there's some, still some of that sovereign citizen crap floating around our head, but at least it's not nearly as bad as it was yesterday. But you still have to be fingerprinted for identification purposes. I know I had to get fingerprinted whenever I ended up starting working for the education system. And that is just standard fare because it is the education department that I am working for now. And that is pretty much required. So you know what? That's just life. Deal with it. You get fingerprinted. So what? It's not a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights. You're not getting your fingerprints taken away from you. That's for damn sure. So as soon as you agree to be fingerprinted, you can be released from jail. Otherwise, you're going to sit there for two weeks. All right. Would you like me to appoint an attorney for you? Yes, if I appoint an, if you appoint an attorney, mm -hmm. um, they're ahead. defense attorneys. Yes. Oh, okay. Here's your son. All right, I'm going to appoint an attorney. Well, now, uh, finally, she's getting some brains because now the attorney might be able to get her a better deal. Uh, but who knows? We'll have to see uh, when July 5th comes around because they'll have to work that out uh, before then. Which I think you could benefit from. <clears throat> I guess you can always say later, I don't want one, but I'd at least like to have an opportunity to consult with one. Thank you. Um, I have a question, too. All right. If I have an attorney, I would like to be able to not be able to see him any sooner than Friday because I want to be able to go. That's fine. Uh, to a couple appointments for my dental and things that I want to I'll do. give you their name or number. It could be a he or a she. Continue to July 5th at 1 o'clock for prelim. Bond is reinstated. You mean that the bond was canceled? No, it wasn't canceled. Oh. Under condition, a defendant be fingerprinted.
The original complaint from the day of the arrest said that you did not comply with fingerprinting at that time. They attempted to do the fingerprinting again yesterday and they weren't able to do it. And I was advised by correction staff that as of today, you've still declined to be fingerprinted. So as soon as you agree to be fingerprinted, you can get out. If you don't, you can sit there for two weeks and we'll discuss it next Friday, or excuse me, on July 5th. Um, in the meantime, I believe Mr. Marvin's misdemeanor office offer is going to remain open. Um, but you're not to be released until you complied with the booking process, including photo and fingerprints. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Today, yes, I, today I, uh, I think it was today or maybe because I slept a lot. So I don't even, anyway, they booked me and took my picture. All right. Well, the picture is done. Enough? That's good enough, but you That's have to agree enough. to the fingerprints. Oh, I still have to do yes. the fingerprints? And you can decide whether you want to do it. If you don't, that's well, up to I'm you. I'm going to do it. All right. Because I appreciate your offer. Thank you. Well, now you agree to the fingerprinting, you agree to uh, the lawyer. Maybe you're now beginning to uh, figure out that this sovereign citizen garbage is not all that it's cracked up to be. So maybe you can educate your son once you get uh, your lawyer and uh, get yourself out of trouble. Um, but I don't hold up any hopes for that. I mean, he's probably too far gone. All right, they'll take you back to the jail. If you finger, finish the fingerprint process, you can pick her up at the jail. Uh, we'll give you the paperwork before she goes about who her court-appointed attorney is. After Friday, I want you to call them and make an appointment to discuss this matter with them. All right, you're good to go. We'll take another shot at this on July 5th. You will have been fingerprinted by then, and Mr. Marvin will be back at that time. So you want to meet me at the jail? Come and get this, please. Yeah, this yeah, he can have that stuff. And he can come meet you at the jail. You should be booked out by 4 o'clock. Yeah, it's just... This one... Wait, maybe I have it. It's the pen number. Oh. Yeah, I so it's okay for me to give it to him? Oh, yeah, I need this at the jail. Um, so at the jail, I'll be down there soon, right? Or He's going to take now? you back right now. I just got to wait for their paperwork and then we can go. Yeah, we got to get the paperwork with the lawyer stuff on, so I'll take it. I can't really give a specific time, but. It'll be by four o'clock. Well, hopefully she has learned a little bit of a lesson here that being a soft heart doesn't exactly mean that you're going to get off scot-free with anything. But I don't hold up any in hope 100% in this way because you know what? Her son probably has a great deal of influence on her. So we'll have to see how it goes when uh, July 5th comes around because by that time, the influence that he has over her may just come back and uh, grab 100% control of her and she may relent and decide to get rid of the lawyer and well that would be that her fate would be sealed after that at any rate guys I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one